I don't trust science and I don't trust scientists. There, I've said it. Yes, it's taken me some courage because after you've watched this video, some of you will call me a science denier. And maybe you're right, you know, maybe that's what I've become. I certainly deny any evidence against the benefits of coffee. Yes, make that triple. But seriously, I've good reasons to mistrust science and scientists, and so do you. I mean, look at this stock image of a scientist. Would you trust that guy? I wouldn't. Yes, that means you shouldn't trust me either, and you shouldn't trust climate scientists. No, I don't. And that's what I want to talk about today. Some of you have been following me since approximately the Mesozoic era, and you remember that I've been highly critical of research in the foundations of physics. I've literally written an entire book about it, back then when people still read books in the Mesozoic era. Today we do 10 minutes YouTube videos, so to make a long book short, most of what physicists do in the foundations of physics today is pseudoscience. It's paper production with no scientific merit that teaches us nothing about nature. It's mathematical fiction, multiverses, tales about the origin of the universe and invisible particles that no one ever finds. But that in and of itself is not the problem. Wait, I'm serious, damn it! It happens every once in a while that some research area drifts off into pseudoscience. For example, the early studies on extrasensory perception, ESP for short, that's telepathy, telekinesis and so on, that was once proper science. It was a phenomenon worth investigating. I mean, who hasn't wished they could use one or the other magical force? Of course scientists were on the case. But as time went on, it became clear that there was nothing to find and the people who were still working working on it were just pretending to do science with sloppy statistics. So pseudoscience pretends to be science but isn't. This happens because scientists not only make mistakes, they sometimes make new mistakes. And if that happens, the scientific method itself needs to develop to demark the new mistake as pseudoscience. ESP studies, for example, led to the development of better statistical methods such as double-blind trials. The new mistake in physics was that physicists came to believe that if you can write it in maths and it's falsifiable, then it's scientific. Unfortunately, it's the other way around. If it's scientific, then it's falsifiable. Now, if you make that mistake, then suddenly all kinds of nonsense ideas become scientific. And that, in a nutshell, is what happened in the foundations of physics. But the problem isn't that parts of physics drifted into pseudoscience per say, because this happens every once in a while in the natural evolution of the sciences. The problem is that it hasn't had any consequences. We've recognized the problem with ESP studies, chucked them out of universities and updated statistical methods to prevent that from happening again. But physicists have been inventing unobservable things that no one ever finds for half a century and are still happily doing it, believing it's proper science. And if it can happen in physics, it can happen in other disciplines too. That's why, after I finished writing my book in 2016, I began to worry that climate change was indeed a hoax. I can't blame people for looking at the foundations of physics, concluding that much of it is obviously bullshit, and then saying, well, see, you can't trust scientists, they're just making up climate change because I worried about the exact same thing. I haven't talked about this because I'm afraid that this will just give some people another justification to question science. But I've come to think that not talking about it just makes it worse. It makes it look like we've got something to hide. If you mistrust scientists, you're not alone. A recent study by members of the Strategic Council of the US American National Academy of Sciences found that about 80% of those polled say scientists are competent and trustworthy. But the remaining 20% doubt scientists' motives. They doubt that scientists will stick with science 
science when it goes against the scientists' self-interest, like access to grants or other financial support. I think they have good reason for this doubt. Indeed, the pursuit of self-interests, mostly financial stability, is what's driving the problem in physics. It's baked into the current organization of the research system. The vast majority of scientists I know are not doing research to get rich. If you're interested in money, you do something else, like getting born rich. But still, they need some income to pay rent and feed the kids, right? And this is why they have a strong incentive to inflate the relevance of their research. To most of them, this comes naturally because they're excited about what they're doing. But the scientific community still has no requirements whatsoever that scientists address their own biases. There's no education, no training, no guidelines, nothing. That you expect scientists to generally exaggerate the relevance of their research isn't just a problem for the public perception. It feeds back into the community. You now have all these people telling each other constantly that what they do is super important and they come to believe it. It's a classic example of what's called social reinforcement. Yes, yeah, same spirit that keeps flat earthers going. And is the same thing going on in climate science? Of course. Does that mean that climate change is a hoax? No, it's worse than that. I'm not a climate scientist and I swear I have no aspirations to become one, but I've spent a lot of time trying to understand the basics, read a lot of papers and textbooks and attended seminars and talked to climate scientists, etc. I'm not asking you to trust me or anyone really, but I found no major reason for concern about climate science. Is the climate changing? Yes. Are we causing it? Yes. Every other option for what could be causing climate change or the denial arguments that you've heard have long been ruled out. It's the sun, we're coming out of the little ice age, cosmic rays and so on. It's not like climate scientists ignored these possibilities. The deniers are just repeating stuff that was laid to rest decades ago. Yes, climate models have some problems, which I've talked about a few times before, but their biggest problem seems to be that they underestimate the pace of warming and the uncertainty. And this returns me to the social problem. I found that climate scientists clearly do have social problems in their community, but these problems present themselves totally differently than in the foundations of physics. In the foundations of physics, scientists basically seem to have concluded that they don't need to care about what the public thinks, they get paid anyway. So now they just ignore all criticism. Climate scientists, in contrast, are afraid of the public. They're afraid of being hunted by activists on the left or the right. They're afraid of having their privacy being violated and of being quoted out of context. They're afraid of being called alarmist. They're afraid of being harassed by climate deniers. They're afraid of being dragged into decades-long lawsuits because these things have happened and continue to happen. And honestly, I think that they're afraid isn't entirely a bad thing because it makes their arguments much more careful and watertight. But it does create a problem. It introduces a bias in their arguments. They're afraid of being called alarmist and they're afraid of giving anyone reason to dismiss their conclusion. And that creates incentives to make the situation look less scary and to underestimate uncertainties. Basically, it's right that you shouldn't trust climate scientists. But the conclusion from that isn't what climate change deniers wanted to be. It's not that climate change is a hoax. It's that it's almost certainly worse than the impression they raise. So whom can you trust? Trust no one. What you can trust for the most part is data, maths and logic. At least on the physical sciences, and I count climate science as physics, it's incredibly rare for data to be wrong or fraudulent and for that to remain undiscovered. It happens, but it's rare. It's likewise rare that maths or statistical analysis is just wrong and for that not to be criticized or corrected. Indeed, the problem in the foundations of physics it's not that the data or maths is wrong, it's that they have no data and the maths isn't about anything in particular. And finally, there's logic. Logic is your friend. 
trust arguments, not people. This video doesn't have a sponsor because I was afraid it might upset some people. But since you're here already, let me give you an update on my personal product launch. That's the simplest knowledge sharing platform ever. I've called it Quiz With It and it lets you create quizzes and courses and link them to any other content, news articles, blog posts, videos, what have you. You can embed them into your own website or newsletter or as a card on a video. If you want to, you can monetize your content and users can collect points from taking quizzes. The quiz creation is free and will remain free, though we do have some premium features because my software developers don't work for nothing if you see the problem. We now also have a comment feature and a small but growing community. I'm excited to be starting something entirely new and I hope you'll join us. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.